Um, so you're in the race at the Olympics that goes off. Uh, obviously nobody has a, an idea how fast you really are. Um, at this point in the middle of the race, you're running your fastest times ever uh, against, against the world record holder at the time, Ron Clark of Australia. That had to be punishing for you. Uh, you're in Japan. Nobody knows you except for Pat and the, and the U.S. team. What made you keep going to stay with that lead pack? I, I trained to run with the lead pack. I knew training I could go the time I ran. Mm -hmm. Tommy Thompson and I sat down. We discussed, what do you think you're ready for? I said I could run 28, 25 any day of the week. Under any circumstance, rest it. And if it's good weather, I'm ready to get the world record. Wow. So we felt that. When the race starts, well, before the race, I start going low blood sugar. And I'm panicking. A Japanese trainer gave a U.S. trainer a candy bar. Mm. I ate the candy bar. 20 minutes, 20 minutes before the race started. Without that candy bar, I might have dropped out at the 5,000. So wow. immediately Clark takes the lead, but, but after the first lap, by the, by the time we're 600 meters into the race, I'm in fifth place within 10 yards behind. On the second lap, third lap, I move into that tight pack. We're on world record pace. But I trained for that. Yeah. But I also yeah. didn't exactly know how it would feel, although I, I trained I, I trained all through my races. I would enter my races tired. Yeah. My last workout before the race, four days before, was 200 meters out of the blocks. No 10,000 meter does that. I had a German coach time me. He goes... Not too fast. I said, what was my time? He said, 23-3, but poor start. With a start, maybe 23-1, 23 flat. I'm going, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, For a long-distance runner, that must be really good yeah. compared to what he was probably thinking was, was a sprinter. What event? I said, the 10,000 meters in the marathon. He goes, yeah. oh, very fast. <laughs> <laughs> little so, different at that when you, when you so start I comparing. I had, I had the speed. Yeah. 5,000 meter mark. I'm within a second or two of my fastest three mile, but I knew I could run faster. But still, you hear that. I almost let them go. I was feeling low blood sugar. Yeah. But I think it was mental at that time. So I decided to take the lead, just one more lap. That paralleled doing wind sprints on the road, 20 mile runs, telephone pole to telephone pole. Yeah. I'd sprint a telephone pole. I'd sprint another telephone pole. I'll just sprint one more telephone pole. So it's just one more lap. I'm going to take the lead. I took the lead. Clark slowed it down. He went by me and slowed it down. I thought, wow, I'm in here for a little longer. Two laps to go. He looks back. Third, fourth, fourth place is falling behind. There's just Clark, Gamudi, and me. Kamudi was a, a a runner from Tunisia, right? Kamudi from Tunisia. Yeah, yeah. Kamudi and, uh, so you noticed that you noticed that Clark looked back. So that must. What was that yeah. signaling to you that he was worried? He saw something. Well, yes, yes. Mm. And then Woldy from Ethiopia. You saw his heart. Off. You saw his heart. Clark looks back, and I thought he's worried. <laughs> I'm going to show my presence. I'm going to take the lead. I took the lead. As soon as I took the lead, he took the lead again. Yeah. But he slowed once more. He slowed. So two laps to go. He's slowing the pace when I when he went by me. He's also tired. I'm in the race to the finish. We gotta get him one way or the other. Machine gun. Fight bullets fly, they might bring. Simplify till we die. 